For part two of this week in our discussion about uh, data and what statistics really is all about, we're going to talk about this important distinction between a sample of data and a population of data. So let's go back to some of these research questions that you might encounter. Uh, these are questions that people often ask in the social sciences and humanities. So what is the average number of words spoken daily among 10-year-old school children in New York City? If you're a linguist, you might ask this kind of question. Another research question you might ask would be, do citizens of the United States approve or disapprove of legalizing marijuana use? Another question that you might ask is, uh, if you're interested in public health or uh, if you're a social psychologist, you might ask about meditation. You might say, does meditating for 15 minutes each day improve happiness among college students in Beijing. These are the kinds of research questions that people in the social sciences and humanities ask. These are real questions. But for each of these questions, there's an implicit population. So let's think about what a population is. A population is simply the entire collection of cases or observational units about which we desire information. So each of these questions, there's a target population. It, in general, for population, uh, you might talk about, um, if you're talking about the percentage of Buddhists in Japan, the population implied is the population of all people in Japan. So let's look at our research questions that we posed and think about what the population might be. So when we ask what is the average number of words spoken daily among 10-year-old school ch children in New York City, if you're a linguist and you're asking that question, your implicit, your target population is all 10-year-old children who attend school in New York City. There's that target population suggested by the research question. For the next research question, uh, suppose you're a sociologist or a political scientist and you want to know about uh, legalizing marijuana use and what people in the United States think about approving or disapproving such a policy. The target population here is all citizens, citizens of the United States, all people who live in the United States. For the third research question, in which we're talking about meditation, the target population implied is all college students in Beijing. These research questions, uh, they imply a target population. So if you want to actually collect data on the entire population, that is called conducting a census. Censuses have a long history. Uh, they've existed for centuries and centuries. And they existed for the, really the purposes of empire building. Uh, a, a state or an empire, they would collect information on all of their citizens for collecting money, for taxing them, for trying to encourage uh, population reproduction because a reproducing population, a growing population, usually historically has led to a stronger, larger empire. Also, these uh, states and empires, they collected a census uh, in order to recruit able-bodied men for war and battle. So. The idea of collecting data on an entire population is known as a census, and it's existed for a very long time. Here's an example uh, that we will use in this course. Uh, it's a census of Turin, Italy in 1705. The French were attacking Turin, and in part to recruit people for war, in particular men, city officials, they surveyed all inhabitants of Turin, Italy. So when you conduct a census, you collect data on all cases or all people uh, in this case. The variables included name, age, gender, birthplace, and the weapons they kept in the household. Here is the data set for the 1705 census of Turn Italy. The rows are residents of Turn Italy, so we have uh, you know, uh, quite a few rows here. I've truncated the output so we could show at least part of it. And then the Columns, they are characteristics of the residents. So what you see here is we have last name, first name, age, and gender of the respondent. There are a few problems with the census. It's often very difficult to conduct, and it's expensive because you have to collect data on everybody, especially hard to reach groups such as, for example, in the United States, undocumented workers or homeless people. It can further increase the cost as well, there are some ethical concerns with the census uh, because when you actually collect data on people, uh, you're forcing everybody to participate in a society. So 
there may be some ethical uh, dilemmas in terms of violating one's privacy. Suppose somebody doesn't want to actually uh, be uh, a participant in a census. Well, then you can't actually conduct a census if you actually can't collect data on everybody. This is why even in the United States, a very rich country overall, they only conduct a census once every 10 years because a census is expensive. Collecting data on everybody or all cases, it can cost a lot and it's difficult. One solution, an alternative to conducting a census is to collect a sample of a population. So here we have a population and we have a sample. And what we're doing is we're collecting some subset of that population. We take samples all the time. This is not just something that statisticians do. Suppose you're at a giant buffet with hundreds of different entrees. Most people will try out some subset of the entrees before you make a conclusion about what to eat. So you might take uh, a steak, you might take a, a bit of chicken, you might take some green beans. Just some sample of the buffet and then out of that sample you say, oh I really like the green beans, I'm just going to have that for the rest of my meal. Again, you sample all the time. When you listen to music, you might listen to a few stations on the radio and then you really focus on one station to to uh, really listen to. Or when making decisions, you might ask a few people and then you make a decision yourself. Or when buying things. The underlying emphasis here is that sampling, it's pretty natural to take a sample of cases and then to use that sample of cases to say something about a larger set of cases. A lot of statistics is really about going from a sample to a population. The idea is to make a sample uh, um, generalizable to the population. Because samples are taken so frequently, we like to distinguish between descriptive and inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics is about organizing and presenting data from a sample or population. So you have a sample of data or you have uh, a population of data when you've collected a census. And so descriptive statistics, you just describe the data at hand. Inferential statistics it's about making conclusions about a population based only on data from a sample. So in descriptive statistics, you might say, I'm just describing a sample of data. In inferential statistics, I'm trying to say something about a population based on a sample of data. So let's talk a little bit about descriptive statistics. A lot of descriptive statistics, it's about presenting data. So you might present data in the form of tables or some visual tools such as bar graphs, bar charts, and so on. Another aspect of descriptive statistics is about summarizing data. So you might look at the average height of respondents in a sample. You might have a numerical summary uh, of a sample of data. Um, you might also look at the percentage of men in a country based on some census data. The key point is that you're using numerical summaries to say something about the data at hand, either a sample or population. Inferential statistics, it involves estimating. So for example, you might use the average height from a sample to estimate the average height in a population. Inferential statistics often also involves hypothesis testing. So you might use a sample of data to test some claim. So for example, you might say that, um, somebody might say that the average height in a population is 72 inches. So you collect a sample and you test that hypothesis. You test that claim using that sample of data. When we talk about samples and populations, we like to distinguish between sample statistics and population parameters. A sample statistic, or statistic for short, is a numerical summary based on a sample. For example, you might say, uh, you know, what's the average weight in a sample of hospital patients in London? That is a statistic or sample statistic. A parameter is a numerical summary of a population. Sometimes we call these population parameters. So for example, the average weight of all hospital patients in London, that is a parameter, a population parameter. It's also useful to distinguish between sample size and population size. The idea is that you want to keep track of whether you have a sample of data or population, meaning you've collected your data from a census. If your data set is a sample of a population, the number of cases the total number of rows in your data set or data frame, it's labeled with a lowercase n. If your data set consists of the entire population, then the number of cases is uh, labeled 
capital N. And this is just so we can remind ourselves whether we're dealing with a population or a sample when we look at our data set. Uh, another note on notation is that sample statistics, meaning numerical summaries from a sample of data, are usually, but not always, expressed in Latin letters. Latin letters are the letters used in English, for example. And here's just one example. If you look at the average from a sample, uh, this is labeled X bar. It's pronounced X bar, just an X with a bar over it. And this is just by convention. Uh, population parameters, in contrast, they're not expressed in Latin letters, um, but they're generally expressed in Greek letters. So for example, the average from a population is referred to by the Greek letter mu. It's pronounced mu. So you can see that we like to, in general, distinguish between population parameters expressed in Greek letters and sample statistics expressed in Latin letters. So let's look at these research questions again. What is the average number of words spoken daily among 10-year-old children in New York City? Somebody might say, oh, well, you know, if you ask, you know, if you're interested in this research question and you pose this research question to somebody on the street, they might say, oh, the news had a segment on how young teenagers spend most of their time text messaging rather than talking. So the average number of words spoken each day can't be more than 500, right? For the other research question, you might say, well, do citizens of the United States approve or disapprove of legalizing marijuana? So you ask another person, and that person says, oh, I met an elderly couple from Oklahoma who really dislike marijuana, so clearly it's widely disapproved by people in the United States. Or if you're interested in a third research question, uh, you might ask, um, does meditating for 15 minutes each day improve happiness among college students in Beijing? And the uh, person on the street might say, oh, I started meditating for 30 minutes each day and I'm happier. So college students who meditate must be happier too. So each of these uh, uh, responses to these research questions, there are a form of anecdotal evidence. Uh, to put it another way, it's all evidence based on a very limited sample size that is most likely not representative of some population that is implied by the research question. Uh, often, anecdotal evidence, it's based on unusual cases that we tend to recall based on their striking characteristics because people tend to remember something that's a little more unusual. Uh, and so when people are using their memory uh, to come up with some kind of anecdotal evidence, uh, it's usually a more unusual case rather than a typical case. Instead of anecdotes, statistics is about sampling appropriately from the population or conducting a census so that you have the entire population. It's about improving the quality of data that we co collect. So instead of anecdotal data, we use a sample or population. Several things you should know uh, for this uh, discussion on samples and populations. First of all, a population is the entire collection of cases about which we desire information. A sample is a subset of a population. We often distinguish between descriptive and inferential statistics. In descriptive statistics, the goal is to describe a sample or population that you have at hand. So you have a data set and you want to say something about that data set. Inferential statistics is about using estimation and hypothesis testing to make some claim about a population based only on a sample of data. Finally, anecdotal data, which you will encounter often, is highly unreliable. That concludes our discussion of samples and populations.